Hey, and welcome to the Loan Officer Team Training Podcast. I'm your host, Irene Duford, and I have a super special guest with me today, Dave Savage from Trust Engine, formerly known as Mortgage Coach. And I am super excited to have you, Dave. It is a, it's an honor that you took time to be with us. You have so much value that you give to the loan officer community and all the communities that you're involved with. So I want to welcome you to the podcast, to the show today. Grateful that you're here. Well, I'm grateful to be here. You do a lot of great things and I'm honored to help uh, kind of spread that mission in the marketplace. Yeah. So one of the things that I know about you, Dave, is that you have fantastic relationships relationships are what matter to you. I align with that because I really believe that everything is about relationships and of course, leadership, you know, your values and all that. So really impressed with what I've seen in Mortgage Coach over the years, because I originated from 97 up until about three or four years ago, I stopped originating because I opened a training company and I'm also coaching loan officers. So I wanted to focus on that. So I stopped originating, but when we were originating, the total cost analysis that you do and mortgage coach, the way it was, how it was so great because it helped loan officers help clients make really good decisions based on a visual, professional, audio and video presentation and, and taught them how to build wealth through real estate. So tell us about how you got started in the mortgage industry and with Mortgage Coach. And then we'll talk about what that is and, and let all the loan officers, I'm sure all the loan officers know, but just in case there's maybe one or two that don't, let's talk about it. Tell me about it. Gosh, I mean, I think someday someone will have a reality show on loan officer stories because I think we all got <laughs> into the story, got into the business in different ways. And I think many of them are just pretty funny. Yes. And, and they would make for some good entertainment. But yeah, no, I, I got in the business early. I think, you know, I've been doing this now for going on 38 years. So my first loan was at 10.26% at over two points. And I, I just really got lucky. You know, Mel Samick recruited me. I met him at a happy hour. Um, he drove a Mercedes. He bought everybody that I was with drinks. And I was like, this guy's cool. He's rich. What's he do? <laughs> Oh, he loans people money. He was a mortgage broker. And, and I'm like, I want to work for Mel. You know, I was working at yeah. Mel and I always was willing to make phone calls. And I always, and I did at a young age resonate that like relationships matter. You know, it's, it's not only who you know, it's how well you know people. So that was something that I don't know if I was born with that gift or I just established that, but I, I did. And, and I was pretty brave. Like I cold called the guy. And said, "Hey, I don't know what you do, but I want to work for you." And uh, that was that was it. You know, he brought me in, and and you know, I learned a lot of le you know lessons that served me with Mel. But you know, for the first couple months, it was like, "Here's the yellow pages," and it was start at C, and I'd call the CPAs and call them up and go, "Hey, my name's Dave Savage with Equity Caliber Mortgage. I specialize in working with CPAs and helping their clients with their real estate financing needs." Do you ever have a client that asks you questions about real estate financing? And I mean, that was it. And it was just a real blessing in my life. I love that. Did he give you a script or did you just come up with that on your own brand new? I'm sure he gave me that script, you know? Yeah. I, yeah, I couldn't oh. have. I, I, you know, I was going to college to get my degree in finance. I was working at Smart and Final. I, that Mel definitely gave me that script. Or maybe yeah. fine tuned it a little bit together. Yeah, that's so awesome that you had the guts to do that. And that, that's one of the things that holds loan officers back. The successful ones get over that, right? They just make the calls and do it. But a lot of people get held back from rejection, they, the fear of rejection. They don't want to be rejected. I'm glad that you didn't do that because look where you are now because of it. it. It was a blessing to find the job. I did have kind of some of the right character traits and it was it was amazing. Yeah, that's fantastic. So you originated and then... How did you come up with the idea for the total cost analysis and mortgage coach? So for a long time, I was just practice, you know, testing different value propositions. And uh -huh. I was successful. I mean, I wasn't like one of the top loan officers in the country, but I went, you know, top in my office, one of the top in Orange County. And, and really my breakthrough as a salesperson came from really understanding that if you can surpass someone's expectation and get them to say, wow whether they said it wow out loud or whether they said it wow to themselves, you could kill it. And so 
it I want I was trying to come up with a way to wow people at scale. So like, how could I do that? And I I landed on advice, you know, because I had learned that hey, if you pick this loan versus this loan and you prepay the difference, look at how much faster you could pay off your loan and look at how much interest you could save. And so that was like, first of all, I remember the first time someone taught me that, I was like, wow. And and then consumers didn't know that. By the way, CPAs didn't know that. Financial partners didn't know that. I came up with this value prop. This is pre-mortgage coach. My advice makes a difference. And, and what I was doing was with a yellow sheet of paper and HP 12C, I started getting into Excel. Like, how could I wow with numbers? And then when I founded Mortgage Coach, it, the name wasn't Mortgage Coach, it was Wow Tools. So Interesting. My, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the company name is Wow Tools. Uh, the mortgage Coach became a DBA of Wow Tools when I decided that, oh, I'm going to sell this thing. You know, I'm going to sell yeah. it to loan officers and... At that time, it was really a side gig. I mean, I was, you know, building a mortgage company. I mean, at one time, I had almost 100 loan officers and had one of the most successful mortgage companies in Orange County, California. And and Mortgage Coach, when I first built it, it was to be an internal tool that was a competitive advantage. But then I was like, in order to really pay to build it, yes, I, I'm like, I'm going to have to like sell this thing to justify the expense. Uh-huh. Oh, that's amazing. I didn't know that. You know, it's interesting you call that wow tools because one of the classes that we have in our training company for support staff is I called it wow training. That's what we call it. Wow training because we're wowing the clients and wowing the referral partners with the things that we teach in that class. So that's interesting. Wow is a pretty cool term, isn't it? Like the it, word. It, it is. You know, there was a number of people in my career I think the Pursuit of Wow by Tom Peters might have been the first time I heard it. And then Dale Vermillion, I did some training with Dale and he talked about Wow and it it resonated. I mean, someday I might write a book, you know, called Wow Selling. I I own the domain Wow Selling. There you go. And uh, I don't don't know, but that was the seed to my advice makes a difference. And then I would just say my entire business career from that point on, which was probably 1990, I think I started saying my advice makes a difference and mortgage coach would have never been founded or created had I not come across that value proposition. And then I was just working hard to to execute on that. Yeah. You know what I love about hearing people's backstories, things that happened when they started out and how you had aha moments along the way is that that can relate to anybody who's building a business, right? The aha moments that we have along the way, the things that we decide to say to ourselves, like my advice makes a difference, that's a form of what I call self-talk. It's a form of affirmations. You say that to yourself and you believe it after a while, right? I'm a big person on self-talk. That's my thing is affirmations, saying the right thing so that you can believe the right thing. So there's a backstory there for me as well. Mel, I got a lot of gifts for Mel. You know, I got the gift of cold calling, like, Don't be afraid to get out there and do it. I got the gift of there's riches and niches and, you know, really focusing on CPAs and financial planners early in my career. And and then when he first hired me, I would go to his house and do books on tape. And and one of the the books I did was Tony Robbins, you know, and this is back Unlimited Power. So in neurolinguistics, which is self-talk. Yes. uh, was absolutely a cornerstone of personal development of everything. And so it's kind of funny you say that, like my advice makes a difference was not only a external value proposition, it was a self mantra. Like like, I can be that person, like my advice makes a difference and it would give me confidence. It would create wow for the consumer Mm -hmm. and, and it even leads to, you know, when I started my YouTube channel for, for or the YouTube channel for, for Mortgage Coach, it was like, if I interview all these people, my advice will make a difference, you know? And the more, the more I mastermind with people, the more I interview people, the more valuable my advice becomes. Oh, that's so true. And it's all about intentionality about what we say to ourselves. And that, that is your mantra. It's, and it's so, so true. Now it may not have been, true 
as true when you first started it, but boy, over the years, it's made a huge difference. And you've had a huge influence on lots of people. Loan officers are our audience. Those are the ones I'm specifically talking about. And as a a loan officer myself, before I stopped originating, I followed you. I watched all the stuff you were doing. I would watch your your YouTube channel and now your Facebook group. and, And it's just been really influential in good, good ways. And so when I heard that my, my, I have two sons that are in the mortgage business and one is a broker here in Arizona and the other one works for Paul Dolan from the Dolan team. And he's his converter. He's the one that does the loan consultations for Paul's team, for Paul's uh, clients. And Paul has taught him so much, but the one thing that he's really taught him is how to do TCAs the right way, how to do the, the total cost analysis with Mortgage Coach. And my son, Kenny, has really learned how to do that really, really well. And he teaches it in our client conversion training class. And we talk about Mortgage Coach all the time and about you. And you know, one of these days, I'll have you on the class with us. But it's, it, it's just been an amazing thing to watch because as a mom, I'm watching him teach other people about how to do something that I used to know how to do really, really well. And I am so proud of him to see how he's utilizing the tools to wow people like that. And and that's what we use in our client conversion. That's why I thought, you know, I would love to have Dave on to be able to tell him just how many people are being influenced through these classes, because we've had over a thousand students. It's we've had the class for four years. Uh, We started loan team training four years ago, and we've had it's well over a thousand students that have heard this story. And so. I'm grateful that you started that and that it really does help people because you and I are aligned with the fact that it's all about the client. It's all about giving them their options, teaching them what they can do to build wealth and being able to use a format to do that. So tell us how the total cost analysis works. You know, there is a formula and I've called it a lot of things over the years. I mean, most often I call it the mortgage coach advice formula, but it, I also talk about financial freedom. You know, people don't get loans because they want loans. They get loans because they want homes. And yes. what they really want is a home with financial freedom, you know? So yes. financial freedom lending really requires a formula, which is also the mortgage coach formula. And it, it, and it's the advice formula. And this is not, I'm um, you know, while I have, built a community. I have led an advice revolution in the mortgage industry, but the formula is pretty simple. And it, and it, and it also just comes from real, you know, a combination of common sense and, and very simple financial planning philosophies. And, and those are one, you have to have options. Like you cannot make an informed, transparent decision without having options. Like it's it's common sense. And then two, when someone gets into debt, they really obsess over interest rate, monthly payment, and what's the cash to close? Like, yes. how do I close it? And that's just not enough. And the federal government requires, you know, APR. What's the total cost over 30 years? But but let's face it, that's that's really not relevant because very few people, very, very few people have a loan for 30 years. And and, and no one is planning for that. So you need to look at the total cost over a time frame that meets the client's goals. Like if they know this is a first time, first home and we're going to move up, well, then you shouldn't be looking at the cost over 30 years. You might be looking at the cost over three years, five years, seven years, options and a cost over time that is relevant to the client's goals. Mm-hmm. And then the third component of this, formula is strategies, you know, and, and that strategy could be, Hey, let's take this loan versus this loan and prepay the mortgage. You know, that's what Dave Ramsey would tell you to do. And, and it would be a good strategy. Like you would save interest, you would become debt-free faster. And then there are other financial planners that would say, you know what, that's true. But if you took that money and you saved it and you had it in some type of an interest bearing account, with a financial advisor or just some conservative account. But I mean, right now T-bills are at 5%, mm-hmm. uh, you know, 4.6. Uh, so what if you took the difference between those two loans and invested it? Now what's the best loan? 
So, so, you know, so that's the formula. There's just really three simple steps and a mortgage coach total cost analysis. It integrates with pricing engines. It integrates with all of the technology that drives the mortgage industry. Mm-hmm. And it gives that consumer this total cost analysis that achieves those three things. So I and love it. like I said, it, it really is common sense. It is financial planning 101. And, and it is the best way for any consumer, any borrower, whether it's their first home or their fifth home, they should always go through that process when making a mortgage decision. Yes. And what I love about it is it helps them so much make their decision. That's number one. The client is always number one. But the other thing is it makes the loan officer look like, because they are an expert, it makes them look professional. It gives the professional. So it's a video they can use video if they want to, but they see on the screen that the total cost analysis, it sh- if they want to do video, that they, they can see the loan officer in the side or on the bottom or the top talking to them while they're explaining the video or explaining the total cost analysis. And uh, I just love it because it reaches all the different types of how people think. The engineer, it reaches the visual person, it reaches the one that you know, overthinks all the stuff and it explains it all to it. That's what I love about it. All those things are absolutely true. Yeah. So now you um, have recently sold Mortgage Coach and now you have Trust Engine. Tell us about Trust Engine because I'm really, I'd love to tell people about it. Yeah. Yeah. So Trust Engine was created through the merging of Mortgage Coach and Sales Bill Rank. So I sold a majority interest in Mortgage Coach to a a PE firm, LLR Partners, and they also purchased a majority interest in um, Sales Boomerang, which mm-hmm. is the, the largest and best data intelligence platform in all of lending. And they merged them together and, and we created this new company name called Trust Engine. And right now, Sales Boomerang and Mortgage Coach are, you know, solutions. They're platforms underneath this bigger platform with a with a, a more ambitious vision, you know, like mortgage coach, you know, what is to change how people get into debt, but it's the presentation, you know, it's that digital layer. And 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 one of the reasons why I did this this deal is to really pull it off and to reshape how people get in debt. We need data. There's so much data that we know in public domain about households, about consumers. And, and if we could leverage this data to get the right TCA, you know, the right digital experience yes. to at the right time, we could really, one, revolutionize lending for consumers. So, so like if consumers literally had this transparency and it was, it was more automated, like data signal, let's give them this experience. Yes. Signal, let's give them this experience. And and it was all about giving them an educational experience that helped them optimize their debt and, and, and really go beyond just mortgage. You know, they're, you know, they got a car loan, they got credit cards, they got student loans, but you know, if we could go data to data or digital advice, because Mm -hmm. it's digital advice experience, I just think we could really put a debt on financial literacy in America and and we could help accelerate families, you know, journey to financial freedom. Like they could, they could become debt free faster if that was their goal. They could own multiple properties faster if that was their goal. They could get to a point in life where they had so much money in investments that paying off their home is just a strategic financial planning decision. Whatever whatever their dream is for themselves financially, Trust Engine can make that dream come true by thoughtful use of data, artificial intelligence, and a, and a digital advice experience. Yeah. So the data, tell us about the data that Trust Engine finds, the data that they find to help the loan officer know more about their situation. So so first of all, we're, you know, we're, we're trying to solve for the consumer. Mm-hmm. Like we want to be able to recommend the best loan, whether you're buying a home or you're refinancing a home. We want to look for data to help a consumer optimize mm-hmm. their debt. And then we want to look for data to help a lender anticipate who's most likely to need a loan in their database. Yes. And, you know, sometimes that's purchase. Like, for example, one signal would be you you met with a spring home buyer and you pre-qualified them. And now they ran 
they're talking to another lender and they double apped you. So let's do a double app alert. Or that may be a past customer in your database and they didn't call you, they called some other lender and there's an inquiry alert. It could be a listing alert. Someone in your database just listed their home. Mm-hmm. It could be someone in your pre-approval funnel whose credit went up by 50 points or their equity has increased. They're a move up buyer. Uh-huh. And, and so it's just signals. It could be, you know, one of the, the, the best signals that we're seeing in today's market are cash out alerts because sometimes that's a cash out. They've got a lot of equity. They've got mm-hmm. a lot of debt and they want to reorganize it and keep the same home. And sometimes they want to sell that home, take all their equity out mm-hmm. and then buy another home with like 5% down, you know? So, yes. so, so we're finding that, you know, we're trying to find signals below the line. And when I say the line, most loan officers only find out if someone wants a loan when the realtor refers them, you know, that means yes. the consumer is actively shopping for a home mm-hmm. or when they fill out some online form or they, they call you, I want a loan. But there's a lot of activity below that line. At first, it's a conversation inside two walls between a couple or among friends. We don't know that. They might start driving the neighborhood. We don't know that. I'm not going to name any apps, but they might start looking at some real estate apps and looking at homes. And by the way, yes. some of those big real estate apps know that, but the but, but loan officers don't know that. Lenders right. don't know that. And, and so we want to find signals below that line so that, that the lender can get to that consumer faster and they can get to that consumer with advice, not price, you know, like price right. is selling debt, you know, mortgage coach powered by trust engine, total cost analysis. That is real value, real advice for a consumer. Yes. And I love that because it helps the consumer. What we're doing is with that, you're helping the consumer make good decisions. Sometimes they don't even know what's available. You know, they don't even know that they could be doing this if they had the advice of somebody that has trust engine. And right. and when you give them that advice, they're like so happy because their loan officer, who is their professional, is giving them advice that they didn't even know a lot of times they could do certain things. That's yeah. what I love about it because we're yeah. helping well, people. Just, you know, when, when a loan officer is doing more than delivering a rate sheet, you know, or a fee worksheet and quoting price, it's just a more satisfying job when they're they're actually giving advice and they're actually helping consumer solve problems and achieve what they really want. Like I said, they don't they don't want a loan. They want a loan because they want a home, you know, yes. or or they want to move up because they want a different school district and they want more bedrooms for their kids. You know, they're 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 you know the loan is just a means to that consumer dream, and and really without you know, a mortgage coach, total cost analysis, or some type of digital presentation powered by Trust Engine, it's just not possible. So it's it's a really exciting time professionally for me. And I think it's really exciting time for lending and for consumers, you know, that are borrowers. It is. It gives uh, loan officers really good information to be able to be an even better professional for their clients. So- <laughs> I I always love mindset stuff. I'm really into having a positive mindset and really being intentional about it. So I think it's really important to have that and to be able to live our goals to the fullest. So what is one thing that you're really intentional about that I know you mentioned my advice matters, but what what other things do you do? Like, uh, do you have a routine or anything like that that you do to stay up? I know you're a busy guy. You're, you've got a lot going on. You're helping a lot of people. So what do you do for your for your own routine so that you stay positive? Yeah, I mean, well, I think most, you know, high performing people have a, a morning routine and I do start early. You know, I do have, you know, a, po- a positive and peaceful part of my morning where, you know, I'm filling it with positive things. But I mean, I think a lot of the listeners have heard morning routines and do this, do that. I'm going to go a little different direction because, I've been in sales. People know that I'm a successful sales entrepreneur and they'll have a kid that, you know, oh, my kid's starting in business. What book should they read? And I really think that, you know, a book that's meant a lot to me and there's some practices in it that I think put me in a place to be a very successful salesperson and, you know, to have a relatively high emotional IQ. And it's called The Four Agreements. I don't know if you've ever read it. I love that book. 
Yeah, yes. I mean, for me, it's a, a cornerstone of just having a good attitude. And so one, I don't take things personally. Now, obviously, I can't be perfect at that. But I, I think relative to most people, I don't take it personally, you know, like use your words impeccably, you know, and you kind of called that and use your words impeccably is not only what you say to other people, it's what you're saying to yourself. Yes. And, you know, don't make assumptions. And I, I personally think this is some of the best sales training that if you don't, someone knows shows you, don't take it personally. Yes. Someone is rude to you and says, no, don't take it personally. And then I think when it comes to selling, not making any assumptions is such a powerful thing. And it and is the biggest mistakes loan officers make is they make so many assumptions and they'll ask, they'll go too shallow with their discovery. They'll make a bunch of assumptions and they'll just tell people what they want to tell people. And so I think that that philosophy of going a little deeper, you know, asking people, hey, how old do you want to be? when you're, you're debt-free and your home's paid off. Um, oh, you, you, goal, being debt-free is not your goal. You wanna save that money and put it in an investment to where you can pay it off, whatever, but don't make an assumption, ask those questions. And then, you know, deliver your advice based off of what that consumer tells you, no assumptions. And then, and then of course, the fourth agreement, do your best. And realizing that doing your best changes every, not every hour of the day, it changes every minute of the day. And so I, I think practicing the four agreements, I read that book at least, well, I listen to the audiobook because audiobooks are a lot easier for me. And me I too. particularly like this audiobook. But I think the practices within the four agreements are one of the most important things to my call it my good attitude and my, you know, grateful mindset and my, you know, everything that I do good as a salesperson, I think comes from those practices. I love that. You know, it's been a while since I read that book. Way too long. So now you've motivated me to get it out again. I think it's a, I think it's a yearly read. Like I, I, I think you're right. I, I think it's worth it for anyone listening to this. Uh, it, it's good stuff. And I never thought about it specifically for salespeople. So now I'm going to recommend everybody I coach, go get that book and read it or listen to it, either one. And it's going to make a big difference because you're right. We do make assumptions. The biggest thing that I love from it is you don't make assumptions that, like you said, when you are constantly thinking and not asking questions as a loan officer, if you're always thinking about what you need to say and not thinking about asking the right questions, you're going to make assumptions. It's- yeah. Well, and it's, and it's the opposite of curiosity, you know, like yes. assuming things, there's no curiosity in that. And yes, and two things, you know, like superpowers that I don't know how much they are just, you know, in my genes from birth and how much of they are just through the the practices of how I've done life. But, you know, I've, I've always been a very curious kid, you know, I, and I, I, I try to keep that. And again, I think in this market where 63% of mortgages start with 2% and 3%, mm-hmm. you show curiosity to consumers and we need not to make assumptions to customers and then I always feel like the other thing is just gratitude, you know, being grateful. But I, I always feel like having a curious heart and kind of following these practices puts you in a place of a good mindset where you, you, you're feeling gratitude, you're feeling good, and uh, life works when you do that. I agree. And, you know, there's been a lot of fear in the mortgage business in the last year or so, just like there has been for different cycles throughout throughout mortgage, the mortgage business or the the real estate world. But I think working through that fear is really important. And I think you just gave us a good way to work through that fear is have that morning routine. Make sure that you realize that it don't assume and make sure you don't take things personally. That is so important. And that's a big thing that I help people work through in coaching them is working through fear, working through uh, the fear of rejection is a big one. And making sure that they're doing the activities that they're supposed to be doing. So thank you for that. Because you know what? As I was raising my kids, I had them read a spe- uh, all of my kids. I have three kids. Two of them are way older than the youngest one. So Kenny's the youngest one. He's 30. By the time he was born, I learned a few things as a mother, right? And one of them was give him that carrot, you know, in the summertime when he needs to read. Tell him you'll pay him for reading certain books. You know, he gets that 
a reward for reading the books. And he read, you know, how to win friends and influence people. He read what to say when you talk to yourself. He read, you know, all of the classic, really good books to read, but he, I didn't have him read that one. So he's not too old not, <laughs> to and learn. And I, by the way, I didn't read that, you know, when I was a kid, I, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what age I was, but I mean, it's probably been 10 years. I mean, when I did read it, there were a lot of things that I just, you know, I, I'll give Tony Robbins, you know, the, the be impeccable with your word, you know, like yes. I learned that from him and I, you know, I learned different things from different people. But, but when I did read the four agreements, I was like, and anybody listen, like the first 50 chapters are a little woo woo. So, you know, it was actually a book that had been given to me and recommended multiple times and I was just like, oh, I'm just not feeling it. And <laughs> one time I tried to do it. And I like quit on page 30. And then I, I finally got through the, you know, first 30, you know, 50 pages. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the code, you know, like this is yes. the code of emotional IQ and the code and, and a lot of good sales practices. And, you know, I was like, and I've referred it to a lot of early in their career salespeople that are just like, man that don't take things personally. Like I have a hard time practicing that. Like, yeah, of course. But, but yeah. But, but it is an ideal that if you can, uh, if you can do that, like, you know, the, you can just accomplish incredible things. Yeah. One of the things is we were born with certain gifts. I, I truly believe that you have gifts. I have, everybody has their own gifts, things that we're naturally inclined to do, but I'm a firm believer that what we do with those gifts is what matters. We don't just automatically become positive. We don't just automatically get good with people, right? We may be inclined to be that way with people because it might be part of our inborn personality, but it's what we do with our activities. It's the, the things that we do repeatedly. It's the books that we read. It's the way that we learn, how we grow. All of those things help us be better at what our natural gifts are. So to answer your what you were saying earlier, you're right. It is part of the way you were born, but it's also part of the work that you put into becoming excellent at certain things that you were born with. Otherwise, they just stay stagnant, right? You just get to this level and you never rise above that because you're not working on it. Totally, totally agree. Yeah. I, I just think it's really important to work on things. I mentioned this before on the podcast, but my husband one day, many years ago, so I've been married 43 years to the love of my life. Wow. And many years ago, he said to me, Irene, you're just, you know, it comes easy for you because it doesn't come easy for him to be naturally, you know, positive. And I'm not saying anything out of turn because we talk about it all the time. We even tell the story how he started taking on self-talk daily to change. And he has, it's really made a huge difference in his life, but it, he was, hesitant. He didn't want to do it. Right. So one day he says to me, Irene, you just, it just comes naturally to you. That's just who you are. I, I see you with people. I'm so proud of you, you know, but that's just how you are. And I said, Oh no. I said, no, 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 no. I have worked at being positive. I have worked at my self-talk to make sure that I'm having good self-talk and I've caught myself and I've all those things that you have to do. It may come naturally, but when you work at it, that's when you go from here to here, don't you think? Um, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I, and that was, I, again, I don't know how much of it is a gene, but hard work has always, you know, something that distinguishes me, something that I think like, you know, no one's ever going to outwork me, you know? So yes. I, I do align, you know, most success stories I know of and most of the top producing loan officers that I've interviewed for the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel uh, you know, they're, they're hard workers, you know, they, yes. they, they, they win by noon, you know, they start relatively early. They have some real important goals that they achieve by, by noon. It's one of the reasons why I'm such a, a fan of Todd Bookspan and winbynoon.com is it's mm -hmm. just a, it's just a great way to, to live life and be successful. Yes. Yeah. So one of the reasons I started the training company and, and also coaching, but I started the training company is because there were so many loan officers that are so successful. They want to bring a team in or they start out and they want to get more successful, but they need a team, right? So you can't really do anything without a team, like at a high level, you need to have people to help you. As you well know, you've got a great team. Yeah. Would you be able to operate without your team? Oh, no. Well, I, I mean, while I have some real gifts, I mean, I have some real you know, challenge. I am ADD, like not just, you know, like I was that kid in school that took Ritalin. 
I am dyslexic. I mean, reading and spelling has never been a, a natural gift. But yeah, I've got a team. I've got an incredible executive assistant. And then every success I've ever had in business has been a team. And now I'm part of a team. You know, we've got an incredible CEO. We've got an incredible chief product officer. It takes a team to, to do incredible things. It really does. When I started in the loan business, I was promised training. I never got it. I worked for a broker in a small rural community in Arizona, and he never gave me training. I had to learn from the actual broker reps, the ones from the companies, and I had to learn that way. So it's really close to my heart. Training is really close to my heart because I I never got it, and I had to learn the hard way, which is a good way and a bad way to learn, right? It's good because you never forget when you make a mistake, but it's bad because you make mistakes that you could avoid if you were trained right. So I'm just really grateful that what you've done with Mortgage Coach, with the total cost analysis and now Trust Engine, we're talking about it in our classes that we do for the support staff. That's what it's about. It's for loan officers don't have time to train their teams. So we do it for them so that they don't have to do it. So we have a client conversion training class that's coming up next week. It starts. Kenny teaches that with me, my son, because he's the one that does that on a day-to-day basis. And I teach it as well. But we're always talking about mortgage coach and the total cost analysis. And he actually shows people on the screen. He shows them how to do it, how to work it, how to explain it, and and gives them time to look at it and see how helpful it is. And a lot of them, I was surprised that some of them didn't hadn't even seen it. There are some that have, but these are the support staff. These are the ones that are doing the consultations for the loan officers, or they are learning how to do it. Do you have a loan partner who does the loan consultations, structures the loan and converts the buyer to work with you? Or maybe you have a loan partner or a team member that you would like to move into that position so that you can be freed up to go get even more loans. How about a newer loan officer who could benefit from some training in how to convert buyers to work with them? Our client conversion training is very specific to this role. It will help them convert even more clients to work with you and your team. We help you to be seen as a trusted advisor. We cover every aspect of converting clients to work with you. They're going to learn emotional intelligence, what it is and how to utilize it. They'll discover the key to a success mindset. Yep, we go deep on this one. How to build rapport right from the first conversation. How to ask the right questions. How to answer objections. Specific dialogues and strategies to overcome rate shoppers. They're going to practice live with other class members, and they're going to also learn how to ask for and receive referrals, how to master the loan consultation with loan strategies that help the buyer make great decisions for their future. Client conversion training will set your team apart when they implement the training that they're going to receive in our class. Our next client conversion training starts Thursday, April 20th, 2023. It's a virtual interactive class on Zoom with live trainers and your team members can attend from wherever they are as long as they have audio and video. Everyone participates. It's a 10 hour live class divided into two and a half hour sessions from nine to 1130 on Thursday and Friday for two weeks in a row. Sign up your loan partner today at loanteamtraining.com. You'll find the class on the client conversion training tab. And so I'm just really grateful to you for creating that so many years ago and helping so many people and helping loan officers because you're not just helping the consumer. You're not just helping the loan officer. You're helping the realtor. You're helping the appraiser because every time a loan closes, a lot of people benefit from it, right? Uh So you're influencing so many people. Well, well, and so so are you, you know, because... I do. I mean, we, we all know. I mean, like, look how much technology has changed humanity. And yes. And, you know, now that AI, it's here. I mean, chat GPT is it pretty is. impressive. And, and it's just so important that loan officers embrace technology. Mortgage coach, I think, I hope it's in your training. It is. Uh, the power of data. Well, I was going to, I know it sounds like mortgage coach is there, but the power of, you know, using your CRM having it be monitored by sales boomerang, trust engine, you know, like it's never been more important that, you know, every lead, every loan, every basis point, it's never been more important to the mortgage business. And and it is important. I do believe that, well, I don't think technology is going to eliminate a lot of loan officer jobs, although it will. Like I do think call center, 
if all you're doing is manufacturing a loan, a rate payment, cash to close, yeah, the machine can do that. If you're not mm-hmm. delivering a device, if you're not monitoring a database so that you could be at the right place at the right time for a consumer with advice, you know, here's the deal. The loan officers that do that are going to replace all, uh, well, first of all, they're not going to be called loan officers. They're going to be called mortgage advisors yes. or mortgage coaches. And they will take the market share from those who don't. So I agree. Uh, and I love that you're training them because it takes t- it takes a human being to operate the technology. It takes a human being to ask the right questions, to connect emotionally, and to share the technology experience. So uh, I really appreciate what you and your, sounds like your family is doing. Yes. Well, thank you. I appreciate that so much. So where do people go to get in more information on Trust Engine. Yeah, so go to trustengine.com. You know, also make sure you follow um, both the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel and the Trust Engine YouTube channel. The Trust Engine YouTube channel, it's leadership, modern leadership for lenders, where, you know, I'm interviewing people that that really connect with leaders, the people making the decision in the mortgage business. And then Mortgage Coach YouTube channel is for best practices for loan officers. You can go to also, you know, the mortgagecoach.com website, the sales boomerang website, but they are platforms and technology products of Trust Engine. And okay. over and over the years, you know, Trust Engine will really be the the primary brand that that drives this uh this advice revolution that's happening in mortgage. I love it. I love it. The engine that will run, run it, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I love the name. When you came up with the name, I you tell told us the name. It was like a drum roll, right? And we found out what you were doing. And you were on the call when we announced it. Yes. Yeah. So well, it was fun. Being, yeah, it, it is fun. And I, I'm in love with the name. I mean, you know, we live in an era where distrust is the, def, the default in America. I mean, there's a, it's called the Edelman Trust Barometer. You guys can Google that. Uh-huh. And, you know, for for all of America, trust is more people default to trust than distrust. But in today's society, you know, most people, you know, default to distrust. Like you got to you got to prove it to me that I can trust you. Yes. And, and and in the lending business, the way you prove it is through transparency. It's it's through advice. And if you show up for a consumer and and you start a conversation from a from a place of I know you, like mm-hmm. you have data, you know some of the things that can really benefit them, and then you give them options, you give them strategies to achieve their goals. You will be trusted, you know. Yes. So that, that's why we named it Trust Engine because we just feel like there's a uh, you know an adv- advice revolution taking place. Mm-hmm. Really, the goal is trust. Like if we are trusted at scale, we'll kill it. Lenders will kill it. Loan officers will kill it. Realtors will be successful. But it really does take some technology and help to do that. I agree. I I think everything matters, technology especially, and the trust, the relationships, making the relationships, building them, and then on the technology on top of that. I think that's great. So I was going to ask you what words of encouragement that you have for the loan officers and what can they do, but you just gave us what they can do. But tell us um, just a little word of encouragement. Let's let's finish it off with a little word of encouragement for loan officers today. Yeah, well, so we're, we're having this conversation in April of 2023, 2020 and 2021. They were easy. They were, you know, really easy markets. Rates came down to hope they never get that low again. I hope so, not. Yeah. Yeah. And and then rates shot up historically fast. You know, they started at seven. Now they're in the sixes. So I I I really do believe this era, if you're using technology, you know, trust engine technology, it'll it'll be the best time to be a loan officer. I mean, think about it. You know, point of sale solutions. You know, you don't have to take your own app. You've got the consumer helping you. You know, a lot of them are filling out a lake. You've got a lot of technology to make your job easier. So I, I think for the for the loan officers that leverage tech, this is going to be the funnest year, not year, decade. Yeah. Well, decade will be amazing. Uh, when you look at the demographics of housing, like housing looks like an incredible place to invest. It is the biggest industry in the world. You know, it is 
the biggest line item in a family's budget. Yes. So what do matters? And then, and then kind of a closing thought is because we're in lending, we have more data than a CPA has. CPA just has income information. We have more data than a financial planner. They just have asset information. We've got assets, liabilities, credit. Like we sit in a very unique position that we can bring more value to a consumer than really any other advisor in America. And because we have all this incredible technology in our industry, like like we, I, I call it be the captain of the wealth team. You you can really make a difference for families. And and I think you can really have a good time. But I, if you're not going to leverage tech, I do think it will be a tough decade. But for those that do, I think it's going to be the best decade in lending. I think so too. Thank you for those words of encouragement. Loan officers need it today. And for the ones that are on fire, they're just going to get more on fire when they hear what you're saying. So thank you. Thank you for being here today, for taking your time. And I really appreciate it. And I, for those of you that are listening, go to Trust Engine, find out what Dave's talking about. It's amazing. And, and some most of you will probably already know about it, but just in case there might be one or two out there that don't uh, do that. And then also, if you have enjoyed and gotten value out of today, please go and either leave a five-star review or go to loanteentraining.com and find out what we have available in the, in the way of classes. And Dave, I just appreciate you being here today. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I really enjoyed the conversation and I love what you're doing for our industry. So let's do more of it together. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. I really appreciate you taking your time to listen or to watch on YouTube or to listen to the show on your podcast preference. And I just want you to know how much it means to me that you take the time to do that. And I hope we're bringing you value. I'm trying to interview different people so that you get value out of it. And it's going to be different every week. But if you got value out of it, I would really appreciate you leaving us a five-star review and letting us know what it was that you got out of the podcast. It would mean so much to me if you would do that. And if you're interested in any training courses, go to loanteentraining.com and that would be much appreciated. So have a great day. Enjoy. Enjoy.